Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another Hilo Chat, the Health and Wellness Oracle. For those of you who might be the very first time you've seen any one of these videos, I encourage you to watch many of the rest. But this is the world's most advanced wearable device. It goes on your wrist. And I think my brother's wearing his, but you know, it goes on your wrist and you see how small this unit is. It's really, really quite tiny. And what we're going to talk about today, rather than go through all the details it has, you can go see, it will be a video called uh, Review One or part one, just look for that. I would recommend you watch that first because that'll give a better overview of all these individual areas we're going into. It might, you can watch this first if you choose, but I would recommend you watch the overview first, the overview review part one. And today we're gonna discuss breath rate. That's just one feature within the Hilo. And you get an app that comes with this that is very robust, that it will monitor everything all the different features and we're and again we're going into each one with each passing video and this one we're going to talk about breath rate now i think breathing and i think okay well i'm breathing so what well you, you here's a, one of the, my favorite analogies for health you can stop eating for approximately three weeks you can not eat you could fast some people longer some people less but you could fast that long without a drop of food and live for a certain amount of time and water, you could last maybe, what, four days? Three, four, and zero water. Like, okay, maybe a little longer, but it's finite. It's less than food. You can last longer without food than you can without water. Try not breathing. It is the single most important thing we do, but the number one most unconscious thing we do. Of all the things we do, our breath is the most unconscious. And that is dangerous, because there is a lot of information in our breath, and there's a lot of power, obviously, in yoga and many things we'll get into, where your breath is profoundly impactful on your entire being, sense of well-being, amongst not just survival. So uh, in, in, when you think of breath rate, Thomas, in terms of, um, it's, say, it's medical application and not necessarily purely medical, but it's connection to how that affects our life and, and the avenue of breath rate that most people don't even understand that there's a whole world of knowledge and information in there that that's really unexplored that this app lets us explore. Right. And on the, what's interesting about the Hilo is it um, first brings your attention to uh, point out that the breath should be in a one to four ratio with the pulse. Well, that's so that means if you're breathing, on average of 15 times a minute, your pulse should be 60 times a minute. Okay. So that's a trend. That's cool. Now, okay. if you see 17 on there, you go look at your pulse, multiply that by four. Now go check your pulse data. Yeah. And what's the number? It should be about 68. Yeah, on this particular reading, no, this one was after, so give me a second. Yeah, it was 70 Okay, so at so, this particular so. time. Now, when, I, my, when my reading was 15 breaths, it, it, was 60, 60. it was 62. Okay, okay. So tune your camera in there. There you go. You got it right there. <clears throat> so more or less, what it's, what it's educating us on is that there's a trend and a relationship between the breath rate and the pulse. And if those things, those things are showing different numbers all the time, different values that are outside that parameter because it's a kind of an, uh, an agreed upon parameter, then it's gonna show certain characteristics of certain disease patterns. And that's invaluable to a physician. If he sees you're breathing 15 times, but your pulse is five times the rate and your breath rate's 80, and this is the, your trend that indicates certain um, disease patterns and that's why they call it disease prevention because it's giving you insight into trends okay data that the doctor wouldn't have if you went there on a particular day and the stressor or the problem that was that was creating this effect wasn't present he wouldn't notice it he would have no way of noticing wow. it and you wouldn't have that data you know you say what's your breath rate you go i don't even know what you're talking about <laughs> right, I'm yeah, we're unconscious of it. I wouldn't have known till I saw it. I mean, I don't know how much I'm breathing. Who does? But not, and worse than that is, we don't even breathe effectively. Which moves into this another conversation. It's it's still pertinent to this. 
but we don't even breathe properly. Like we, most of us are neck and chest breathers. And the only time diaphragmatic breath or really oxygenated breath comes into us is when we have that one big breath, you know, the one, what, four times a minute, you know, maybe, maybe actually, no, you probably wouldn't be four times a minute because if your breath rate's only 15, 16, 17 breaths, you're not doing a big deep inhale every 10. It well, you might, it, depending on the, if there's a good point, because depending on the health of the individual and the stress level, if you saw that pattern come up where there was big deep breaths like that, that's a, a that's a big symptom, a sign. Wow. That means some, that means something. The beginning, we don't go into that because we're looking at the breath and we don't really understand it. Like I say, well, what does it mean? But you think of the breath, it's probably the most powerful medicine you can take. Mm -hmm. Without it, you're going to die. We know that. Yeah. Depending on how it's patterned in the body, it's going to show existence. It's going to show subsistence or it's going to show vitality or longevity through the breathing pattern. Yogis, on average, would breathe eight times a minute. Now, we're not going to see much of that as an average daily living because we'll be around 60 to, 60 to 100 is the variance medically. And that would be considered normal for an, for an adult. Say 60 to, let's say 60 to 80. Okay, And a highly trained athlete will drop lower than 60. Yeah. But because he's taking this heart and accelerating it and teaching it to recover, it'll actually drop down in his resting pulse. Mine will be many times 56, 58. And I had a workout today and it went to 50. But today I felt tired. And so the 50 to me was an indication this workout's over. I am not. I feel I'm not recovering. I don't feel the power. It's over right now. That breath rate, 50? No, I don't want to be in 50. You could, you could say, oh, it's really good because you're really calm, right? Mm. But knowing my pattern, because I have other data on the helo, I can look at it and go, I'm just simply not, my energy is still not up. I had dengue. I can see there's a pattern. I'm not fully recovered, and I'm not training hard. I'm going now. That's, that's intelligent. You're using the information plus to your body and going, why would I push it? to prove that I'm tough and you'll, you'll fight through the, you know, the, a lot of the cliches around being tough and never quitting. There's that kind of pattern that runs in a lot of people too. Right? right. Right. That's the difference between working out and training. Someone that trains understands rest and recovery and nutrition and, and the mental mindset behind the action. Somebody that works out just goes on a pattern response. I go every day at five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. That produces minimal results. Um, but when we look at um, the breath and we, we ask somebody, which in Kundalini, breath is everything, um, what's the most important phase of the breathing? The inhalation, the hold, or the exhalation? And all I need to do is invite anybody that's listening to this video to experiment. Take a deep breath, nice, slow, deep breath and hold it and you'll soon realize that there's no important cycle to the breath the inhalation is no more important than the hold or the rest and the exhalation is no more important than the rest of the hold it's the it's the cycle between the two it's the ease between the two that's very yeah. important yeah, you that's breathe nice. in deep and you go oh all I, all I need is a deep breath okay go ahead have your deep breath and then after a certain period of time you'll say you start gasping for a deep breath if you're a shallow uh, chest breather or a throat breather and some of the Taoists will say a wise man breathes through his heels but the average man breathes through his throat because we don't know how to breathe we haven't been taught the importance of breath and how it is it one of the few, if not the only autonomous uh, system that we have control over? We have control over our breath, which breath completely, you know, this is what you've mastered in NLP is, you know, motion creates emotion. Your breath regulates function. If you want to come out of stress, it will be your breath. It behind all important function will be your breath. Someone goes into a panic, the first thing you need to do 
really, besides changing the physiology and getting the access, you're going to go, you need to get a grip on your breathing pattern. Yeah. If you can get a grip on the breath and the breathing pattern, you control mood, which mood is controlled by hormones. So you're regulating your nervous system, regulating your heart, regulating digestion, regulating elimination. You're regulating all your stress hormones. It's all going to come from the breath. It's the first impulse of life for for the this being. I, it's interesting because I I created a course uh, to to coach golfers on how to use their mind more effectively for competitive level golf. And that means juniors all the way up to professionals. Those of us who really love the game, which I do, is a passion of mine. So I took my skills towards there. And this one area that I call mastering nerves was a combination of breath and tactile drills, physical sensation drills. So the person can get fully associated again, I mean, into their entire body, not just into their head. And then they're, you know, they're running pictures and in internal dialogue, increasing their breath rate and they're breathing right to here, which basically stimulates the brain. It's fight or flight. Any, any chest based breath rapid, the brain is on guard. You're just instructing the brain that there is a, an impending danger. Clearly there's something I need to be aware of. So you're, you're on, you're peaking as opposed to, the full diaphragm diaphragmatic breath, slow, deep breaths. And I, I mentioned that because of your conversation, Thomas, that I call it instant calm. I mean, now I've done it so many times and I teach it so much. And sometimes before coaching calls, I'll do it. I'll do three. It takes me two. If I do two, inhale for four, hold for five, exhale over six. So it's each stage slows it down a little further. You do that three times. I'm instantly calm. I go right into a nice grounded spot because I've anchored it for so many years. It just, it happens pretty quick and I can get to that place. So just imagine you have control of your breath. You're the part of your system that you can control, which is your breath and having an app that can actually, I mean, read it to let you know the improvement of, of, of the changes. You know, we're going to be doing work with, um, uh, some yoga centers and yoga teachers and people within the class to actually quantify what's the change before you did yoga and the change now that you've done yoga or and any variable in between. This, this thing allows us an insight, a, a magnifying glass into our life unlike anything we've ever seen. And it gives right. us that ability to take, make decisions <clears throat> Excuse me, and and improve that one area of your life that we're most unconscious of, our breath, right? Right. We can monitor it and we can regulate and we can also document now. This helps us document certain patterns in Kundalini Yoga because the breath is such a um, pivotal point of ev everything. There's many different breathing patterns, many different duration, time durations of inhalation, different ratios of holding, different ratios of exhalation and they stimulate different parts of the nerves and the glands it's just like a science and the 3h foundation of kundalini has a research department and they hook up to all sorts of expensive biofeedback equipment yes. to validate all of this teaching over the last few thousand years so it's become scientifically validated that breath is a very significant part of health and vitality and well-being so to see a trend of how many times you're breathing a minute is great and when we really want to get into understanding the breath, we know that we can change blood pressure because when we can change mood function or endocrine system and the nerves, we know that we can <laughs> slow the heart down by breathing. You talk to any yoga, talk to any free diver. What do they do before they go down 300 feet on one breath? It will be all about the breath. That one breath is all they have. So, it's super important to understand the importance of breath and see trends and how we can basically train our body and our function through the breath. So that's really what, um, you know, that excites me about this is, is we take this as a way of documenting and validating some of these concepts and we start forming groups where we share this information among groups and we go, okay, okay let's, Let's see if we can change function as a group, collectively, uh, uh, practicing these breathing patterns. We have people that are diabetes or heart conditions, and you know they have time, and they want to get better. 
how about we form groups and we can document 90 days of breathing exercises. We don't need to exercise. We need to learn to breathe. So we, we train ourselves through our breath and we can validate that and document it. That is big information for the man. Yeah, no fluff, quantifiable, verifiable. We can all agree it occurred type of data. That, right. Right. And then when you think about, uh, it, it made me think about when you think about yogis and how little they can breathe. And some of them can be buried and you see they buried it or, or go like extended chunks of time with minimal breath. Now, it, it, to me, it, it gets into a couple conversations. Like if I'm really healthy, so I, eat, I take vitamins or say whatever, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm eating well. Now, if, if I'm not processing that food, it doesn't matter how much good food I pump into my system. If I'm not processing it, if I'm not getting out of it, I can pile in more and more stuff to make up for whatever I think I'm not getting. My body's not using it. And it's a waste of time. You can just keep pounding stuff in. It's not going to change. And that's what the majority of people do. My system isn't, for example, in a place to maximize its ability to process what's coming in. Now let's take that with breath. Okay. Some people don't really inhale and get the full value. Whereas a yogi, he only needs eight breaths because he's maximizing every pull of that breath. And to again, as I mentioned earlier, we're so unconscious of that. We're like, well, what are you talking about? Well, what if you could only breathe 12, 14 times a minute, but they're maxed out? Your body's getting all the prana, all the goodness of that breath. You're an efficient being, and that stimulates right. the rest of your body, right? Right, and then that's really li literally it. Is there's vital force through the breath. That's a life force. Um, it's interesting you talk about that and how we breathe, um, like breathing through your nose. It, uh, there's a Russian... A Russian uh, Wait, expert. Let's get a little closer to the mic again. There's a Russian expert. I think his name is, uh, I'm trying to pronounce his name, anyway, Butoyak. Butoyak. And it, it isn't so much that we're hyper oxygenating ourselves by breathing deep, it's more the ratio of carbon dioxide. We only need five or six percent oxygen out of the air, and the air has about 20 something percent oxygen. So if we're hyperventilating or shallow breathing, we actually disrupt the balance of carbon dioxide and oxygen. So shallow breathers tend to be more acidic. They become acidosis. You know, they would say, yeah, you're really, and the symptoms of that is sore muscles and joints and some things that the medical profession may disagree on, but it's starting to become a trend that people that are making complaints about, I always feel stiff and sore and tired. Those, those are conditions where there's acidosis. If these people are consistent, shallow breathers, especially breathing through the mouth, they're finding correlations between shallow breathers having bad breath, even to the point where the jaw shrinks and the teeth position change. Um, things like this that would seem really bizarre to even imagine. Shallow breathers tend to eat more food and they're always hungry and they tend to gasp for breaths. You know, it's yeah. like they're rushed and they're not, hey. like you said, they're not assimilating the nutrients because they're winding their system up and they're trying to breathe and they do this big <gasps> chest expansion gulp. You know, it's like a, the big gulp for air that they need because they're constantly constantly in a deficit for oxygen yeah wow balance of carbon dioxide and then they breathe for a while and then they have to make this big <gasps> through their mouth so the, the correction is to not breathe through your mouth and breathe through the nose because the nose regulates temperature it regulates the velocity of the air moving in and out which tends to create a more rhythmic yeah the pacing yeah a more rhythmic a, a type of breathing and regulates the heart regulates the nervous system <laughs> basically if you want to regulate the nerve the heart and the brain and create coherence you're going to be doing it through the nose and people that understand yoga they know that there's specific breathing patterns of breathing in through one nostril and the other to form hemispheric integration in the brain so breath is a is a science it's not just something we do because we need to get oxygen in our blood and live. There's a science behind breath. And at the beginning, we want to notice that do we have a trend of breathing at the right ratio with our pulse? Well, the helo shows us. 
as we want to advance it more, which the intention of, 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 of Team 5G is to, is to go deeper into the lifestyle. The Hilo is, gonna, is a lifestyle oracle to show us if we're in normal parameters. But beyond that, we want to know how to create that healthy lifestyle. And we can dive deeper into the breath and how to use it, how it relates to our health. And those are the fun things for me to get into that stuff and share that with people. I think we have That's exciting. Yeah. Create, create big groups of Hilo users that are sharing data and practicing new things and noticing their health improve. That is really cool. Especially yeah, as a community, because you'll get feedback from other people too and what they're doing. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's interesting how when I imagine short, short breaths, which you talked about very well, about the impact of it, you know, in, when you talk about stress and people are under pressure, stress, the shorter breaths, because you're get, it's, that's the gasp. It's, it's basically diverting all oxygen from your extremities. Blood flow diminishes to all, all, all your other extremities so that there'll be more oxygen available for your brain to function under the stress. And that's, the, that's one of the first cues of stress-induced kind of pressure is that all those things are connected. Bad blood flow, short breaths, quicker thoughts. You, 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 can't, you can't peg one thought and slow it down. Things are just going. Exactly. Now, does exactly. that fit the North American lifestyle? I know that's an extreme example, but that's the point. For, in order for us to learn, we polarize, and then we know we're somewhere in between. We polarize right. to find the extreme and go, you know what, now I'm somewhere here, but that's kind of true. You know, what we want to do is understand that when we breathe properly, we're oxygenating the system. And that's where the helo inside these little plates here inside the helo, there's little bands that these are influencing the germanium, the hematite, Himalayan salts. Well, a couple of them combine to improve the oxygen level in your blood up to 300%. Well, that's massive for people who have challenges with breath. Well, now we have a breath rate analyzer. And you can do a little yoga or some simple breathing exercises. Inhale over four, hold for five, exhale over six. Just that. You will improve your ability to get from the oxygen what your body needs. You'll be able to verify it and start making those dramatic changes with one simple thing, improving your breath. Well, you'll know that. I mean, if you want to really pay attention to your breath, put in some earplugs and walk around for half an hour. You'll start to sense you know, the blood moving through your veins in your head, you'll be very conscious of your breath, of the way you breathe. And you'll notice that after what, if your breathing isn't paced and you start running out of oxygen, you get into the hyperventilation state and you go for that big, <sighs> what happens to your heart? It's almost like it gives another little shot of adrenaline because you're evoking a fear response. Yeah, it's total it's fight or flight all the way, just all right. on guard. So we call those, those are stress hormones, adrenaline and cortisol. Those are stress hormones. We just put ourselves into the stress phase. So if everything we're doing on our day from not eating properly or standing up and eating and not spending time to put itself in a quiet environment to eat good food and free of distractions, if the whole lifestyle is adding little tiny stressors, it becomes cumulative. That's a problem. We go, well, it's no big deal. I mean, so what if I don't eat lunch? Or if I eat lunch with the TV on, the radio yeah. on, people fighting, or I mean, all these little things, you have to realize that these things are stressors and they're accumulative. You do not want those if you want longevity. Okay. You look at it, you're like, is this situation helping me ascend or descend? Real simple. And then you can make a, um, an observation for yourself and, and modify your, your pattern. You may have to. That raised a really good point. If you understand your values, and we'll kind of wrap up this call, we, as we know, we're going into many of these areas. If we have a value, meaning I value, say, longevity, and you might want to explore this. I mean, I do a lot of this working with private clients, is their value hierarchy. Most people are deeply unconscious of that. That'd be more unconscious than your breath. If your breath is unconscious, that's <laughs> unconscious. Well, your value hierarchy is profoundly important, so I know what I value. And if you find that a high value is longevity, quality of life, you'd say, okay, well, that's a value. I have to measure my actions and my decisions against those values if they matter. If they don't, they're not high values. What you're doing, ultimately, if you're not following some high values, you're going on auto, uh, de facto. It's default. The default is what's the most stimulating, meaning not positive or negative, but the most stimulating. Most stimulating right. is 
well, I've got to do this. I'm on my work. I got to meet, I got this appointment. I got to eat now because that's the most demanding of your attention. You unconsciously becomes your value. And if you're disconnected from a core value, you are out of alignment. And that lack of alignment will lead to massive stresses, serious health issues, a whole list of things. Look at our society. We're just out of alignment. You know, it's like, uh, uh, it's like the Koyana Skatsi, the, the Hopi Indians. That word Koyana Skatsi means life out of balance. And it's because there's, there's disharmony, dis-ease. They all, if you really look at language and understand the systemic nature of our being, there's a lot of obviousness in our language that tells us exactly where we're at. We don't overthink it. So, you know, know your values, understand what matters to you. And if health does, this thing is phenomenal because it's not just you being intuitive. It's you getting verifiable information that, man, I'm making changes. And for me, the exciting part is I'm seeing the growth, the benefit of taking the actions that, man, my life's right. improving. That gets you, imagine being motivated about your health, not stressed about it. You're motivated by the gains, the growth, and the, you know, you're closer to your values. You're fulfilling some of your core values. Right, right. So, this is yeah. to offset all the stressors that we have in modern day living. You know, modern day living brings stressors this can at least help us with a little bit like creating more higher amounts of ions and protecting us from EMF, uh, helping our blood be a little more oxygenated, helping us be a little more conscious of our breath. Something like that. We just need to be more conscious because like you said, the problem is most people are unconscious Big time. about most of their actions. They drive to work and they go, I've had it. How did I even get here? I just drove 40 minutes. I don't even remember the drive. Someone else drove me. Well, okay. People do that in their lives. What happened exactly. in the last 20 years? Yeah, you look at your life and go, yeah, what happened in the last 20 years? I'm, you know, now I'm retired and I have no clue what to do. Another stressor. So uh, the helo is really, yeah, I keep saying it's literally the, the uh, stepping stone or the interface to help us look inside, get conscious, get present, and make some alterations so we can actually live long enough to enjoy all the fruit of our labor. And there, so, so as we kind of condense this call, for those of you who see, perhaps you want to make a life change, a lifestyle change, really more than that. And we're here at Team 5G and World Global Network, we are specifically about lifestyle. It's not about bling. It's not about flashing pictures of fancy cars and the other nonsense. We have a different integrity and we believe that when people are inspired, they aspire to more. And I'm inspired by this. We get to share it. And you aspire to more of your, of your own potential. And that's really what we're all about, is what are we capable of? What could we do if we're so aligned with our vision? We have no idea. We don't even know. So this idea that we know the future, you don't know anything. Neither do I. Until we get aligned, then all of a sudden we unlock our potential. And by sharing all this information, is profoundly impactful on you and your life and the community and the world we actually build together. So if you're interested in these kind of things, I encourage you to contact us and maybe, maybe you're inspired by this vision because this market is big and there's a tremendous opportunity and a, tr a tremendous income opportunity for those who are inspired by this like us. And you can share what we're doing. We're, we're having fun and it's you know the four hour work week. I mean, who wants to work 40, 50, 60 hours a week? I mean, that's insanity. Why is our life out of balance? I mean, come on. You can't. Yeah, you don't, yeah. do you, you really need a, something to tell you that there's a better way than that? <laughs> right? Do you need a device to tell you that there's yeah. a better life than working here 70 or 80 hours a week? Yeah, so, that's true. You know, that's, that's, that, uh, that's a master-slave relationship. And, you know, we're, we're interested in sharing something that can actually take people out of that. That's... that's uh, exciting for me for yeah sure. people are trading their time for money and that is what slavery is if you're trading your time for money you can never get that back there is no paycheck that will make that equation fair unless it's just so absurdly high you only have to trade x amount of time for a week or a couple months and you're done but right. when you're talking 10 20 30 40 years of trading time for cash you've signed a deal that you can never win, that, that deal will never pay off. There is no scenario in history where people working for a living have led to retirement numbers that are, that are wealth numbers, none. There's just some people do a little better than others, but 94% retire basically close to poverty. Think about that number. We're not talking two, 
is the bulk of people are not experiencing the dream that they're, that they're buying into when they enter that grid for four right. decades. And even when the people do have money that retire, they now they need the longevity. <laughs> exactly. Keep going. <laughs> they need the longevity to experience that money. And to typically at that point, they have regrets like, I wish I was healthier. You know, I have all the money. I wish I could buy some time because you cannot buy back that time. You, yeah. Buying back vitality when you're 65 and deciding to make a lifestyle change is a lot more difficult than when you're 30. So people that are 30 says, I really don't need to worry about much. You, you feel bulletproof and invincible when you're 20 and 30. Yeah. You know, that's the state. That's hormones. Hormones make you feel that way. But as they decrease, usually with age, so will that idea of feeling bulletproof. You'll take less chances. You'll be yeah, less so, adventurous. Yeah. You'll want to be the safe person. You Your values shift. More. And then all of a sudden, well, who's going to take care of me now? <laughs> I mean, that's the problem. So what we're trying to do is encourage people to be conscious and present, have a great lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle. And in the meantime, we can make a little bit of money as a byproduct of helping people. So that's really what, what motivates me about this. Yeah, it's an exciting time. So those of you, as you know, there's contact information right on this screen. You'll see an email account, contact, we'll help you get set up. And of course, if you're interested in the Hilo, you can just contact us as well. Any stories, anecdotes, any thoughts, comments, just leave them below or contact us. Maybe you know some things we don't. We'd be interested in any information. Of course, of course, exactly. Conversation. Share. Sure. Share and just join the conversation. That's really what this is about. So look forward to seeing you on our future talks and you'll see the list of them in this channel, the Hilo Health and Wellness Oracle channel. There'll be lots of videos. I encourage you to watch part one if you haven't, just so it kind of puts a perspective on all of these subsections within the Hilo. And then, uh, yeah, stay in tune. And we'll, you, if you stay subscribed to our channel, you'll get updated of new videos that come. So subscribe to the channel and uh, we'll keep you in tune and, Join the conversation. All righty. And we'll talk to you soon.